Hi there, I'm Lexi Tucker, Associate Editor for LCT Magazine, and today I'm here with my good friend, Tina Nguyen of Concierge Hi. Limousine <laughs> in Orange County, California. So to start things off, I want to say congratulations. I know that you won the Operator of the Year Award a while back at the LCT show uh, in the, if I recall correctly, 31 to 50 vehicle category. Yes, 31 to 50 vehicle category. Very cool, so congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm beyond thrilled and excited and I'm really grateful. You know, it took a lot to get where I'm at, but I'm so happy. <laughs> I, uh, I think, when people win that award, it really goes to show the amount of thought, effort, and dedication when it comes to the application process. Oh yeah, I mean personally for me, I know some people think I'm crazy, but I'm very detail oriented, I'm very OCD. I literally probably spent 20 hours on that application. 20 hours? Yeah, I redid a lot of the documents that I attached. Um, I mean, when I do something, I want to make sure it's done right and it's done right the first time. And I think that just shows why we won because, you know, I want to make sure my company constantly excels. And so I think that's where the judges saw how much work I put into my application. Mind you, I don't know how much work other people did, but I was very confident with what I put into it. Excellent. Yeah. So having won the award, what does it mean for you and your company going forward? Is it just going to be something that pushes you to strive for greatness even harder? I definitely, I'm not a complacent person, nor am I comfortable. Every day I feel like I want something more for the company, you know, whether it's the littlest improvement, you know, finding out something about my chauffeur to make him happy, no matter what, every little bit, you know. So at this point now, I just feel like I'm ready to take concierge to the next level. Um, I'm ready to apply probably in two years in that 51 category. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's get ready for up. that. Yep. Excellent. Very <laughs> cool. So... You and I, I think one of the reasons why we get along so well is uh, not only are we in the same industry, but we're close to the same age. Yeah. So as a millennial um, and as a female in a male-dominated industry, <laughs> um, what is some advice you would give to those who are in the same position when they're looking to join the industry and make a name for themselves? Honestly, be yourself, be real. Don't ever be intimidated. Um, I just feel like people just think like, okay, you know, like, for instance, oh, well, the guys are known, they're this and that. No, I mean, create genu genuine relationships and friendships with people and, you know, just make that effort and don't be scared at the end of the day. Just be confident with yourself because you, you never know what's going to happen. You know, I only started going to the shows a few years ago and I can proudly say I'm pretty known now and have a really good reputation to follow along with that. So step it up. Like who cares if you're a female? Who cares if you're millennial? I mean, if anything, if you're millennial, then step it up even more to prove to people that you aren't because yeah, I was born in that age category, but my work ethics prove otherwise. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, something that I know a lot of people know you for are your videos on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> of uh, the meals you bring in and the snacks you bring in for your staff. I think one of the biggest issues in this industry right now, especially because of how good the economy is, is being able to attract and retain excellent talent. Oh yeah. What do you think other operators should do to kind of be able to do just that, retain the people that really do a good job for them and attract newer people? I think the difference is that, yeah, we're in a business, we're running a business because we all want to make money, but I look at things a little differently. I don't look at the fact that I need to make these numbers and I need to have these goals for that reason of, you know, you know, 2013, we made this amount, so 2014, we need to increase it by that. I look at it in the perspective where I have people to feed, mm -hmm. I have families to take care of, and then I'm also responsible for the mouths that they have to feed and their well-being. And I want to try my best to make sure that they're living comfortably as well, not paycheck to paycheck. So that's my mentality is that I want to make sure my employees are happy, you know, the littlest things where I can feed them, being in pastries. Um, you know, I do little things where I actually get to know the guys. Um, you know, I have 
I don't buy cheap candy. I buy really expensive candy. I put on my desk, you know, so the guys are always tempted to come in. <laughs> um, and they always chat with me and, you know, just get to know them. At the end of the day, you have to generally show you care about people. If they're just another employee, let's be real. That's, you know, you're just running another business. Why? Wouldn't they just go elsewhere? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So basically, what you're saying is, next time we see each other, I gotta bring you a world's best boss mug, right? <laughs> no, I just said candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for being with us today, Tina. I really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Lexi. Thank you so much.